Hello. It's good to see you. Today we're going to be reading about um, gardening in little containers and gardening in small spaces. So even if, like, say, you live in an apartment or a place with not much property or land where you could have a garden, maybe you can learn a few tips and tricks for gardening in a small area. Now this section here that we're going to look at first deals with windows. So maybe you could do like a little window box, something like this, and put all different kinds of things in it. Even the smallest apartment has a window sill that can provide a place to grow a few plants. You can change the display each season to make the most of whatever is available. Spring bulbs, tender annuals in summer, or evergreen foliage plants in winter. Scent plays a part too, particularly in summer when an open window gives you the chance to enjoy sweet-smelling pinks, tobacco plants, or night-scented stalks. You can coordinate colors and displays, and you can paint containers to enhance both the interior or exterior of your house or apartment. It's a nice composition there, a nice array of colors and plants. Ooh, that's really pretty. I like that. And this too. Whether your home is a country farmhouse, a formal townhouse, or a city apartment, decorating your windowsills with plants can enhance your home and give pleasure to all who pass by. Ideally, the containers you use and your choice of plants should be sympathetic to the architecture of your home. A country windowsill needs just a few terracotta pots filled with old-fashioned plants such as scented geraniums, pinks, and auriculus. While you can emphasize the formality of a townhouse by placing matching window boxes on each windowsill and filling them with a mixture of topiary and trailing plants with added seasonal flowering plants in a single color for a touch of brightness. In an urban apartment, your windowsills may be the only garden you have, and how you choose to decorate the windowsills can be a reflection of your attitude to urban life. Fashionable grasses in glazed Japanese pots for a style fiend, favorite flowers taken from friends' gardens for the reluctant urban resident, or exotic herbs and miniature vegetables for the foodie. All these and more can be grown successfully on your windowsills. And here we have the herb window box. You do not need to even you do not need even to own a garden to appreciate the pleasures of a windowsill lined with sun-loving herbs. Of all plants, aromatic herbs are particularly well adapted to growing in a hot, dry position because this is not so different from the conditions they experienced on the rocky slopes above the Mediterranean where so many of them had their origins. Growing herbs on a windowsill will also ensure that you can make the best possible use of the herbs because they will always be at hand whatever the weather. And here they show someone distressing a window box if you want to make it look kind of old. There is now a very wide range of wood stains available for the garden, which are preservative as well as colorful. The great advantage of these is that they are easy to apply because they are water-based, quick drying, and do not harm plants. This means that the maintenance and decoration of wooden window boxes, tubs, and planters has become much simpler. This window box has been given a distressed finish by first applying and rubbing, uh, down, rubbing down a coat of wood stain and then applying and rubbing down a coat of emulsion paint. So first you want to paint the window box with a bright blue wood stain and then you dry. When it's dry, you rub it down lightly with fine sandpaper. Second, you're going to apply a light coat of emulsion paint and a terracotta shade over the blue wood stain. Third, when dry, 
Give the window box another rub down with sandpaper so that the blue and terracotta blend together to give a gently distressed finish. The window box can be sealed with matte varnish or left to weather gradually. While most edible plants need to be grown in considerable quantities to supply enough food, even a small handful of freshly picked herbs will turn a simple meal into a feast. A window box planted with sage, lemon thyme, rosemary, oregano, and basil will provide a full palette of flavors for your summer cookery. When planting herbs as densely as this, it is advisable to choose a fairly deep container which will allow generous space for root growth and contain sufficient compost and nutrients to keep the herbs growing strongly all summer long. The addition of coarse grit to the compost will keep it free draining, which is how most herbs prefer their soil. One of the secrets of su successful herb growing is to keep picking the young stems regularly before they come into flower. This will ensure that the plants continue to make new growth and provide a steady supply of lush young shoots. With the exception of basil, all these herbs should survive the winter except in the coldest areas. If you only have shady windowsills, you can still grow herbs, but you should choose those that do well in cooler conditions. Parsley, chervil, mint, a sprig of variegated mint is shown above and sorrel are all suitable. And here we have painted tins. Those are pretty. Garden centers and nurseries make fortunes selling terracotta pots and fancy planters, but it isn't always necessary to spend a great deal of money to achieve stylish results. Using a coat of bright paint, you can transform empty tin cans into attractive and functional plant holders. Be very careful to make sure that the cut edges of the tin cans have been smoothed down or covered in masking tape to avoid accidents. Although there is undoubtedly much to inspire us in the great gardens of the world, there is also inspiration to be found in simple cottage gardens with their uncontrived planting and use of found materials. Old car tires, leaky buckets, and enamel saucepans are all given a second lease of life as containers for plants, and now that recycling has increasingly become part of our everyday lives, there is pleasure to be gained from transforming a humble tin can into something of endur enduring usefulness. In a small garden, Simple planters made from tin cans are a colorful and lightweight alternative to terracotta and can be used to adorn wall spaces, window sills, and tabletops. Filled with seasonal flowers which complement or contrast with the color of the painted tins, they will provide a year-round show. The tins make charming containers for cottage garden plants and can be used to great effect on window sills to display supermarket herbs. In this case, you do not need to provide drainage holes. Instead, fill the base of the tin with a layer of gravel to prevent the herbs becoming waterlogged. In a pier, it shows you how to transform tin cans. A touch of paint will transform a tin can into an elegant container. Family-sized tin cans will hold a 4-inch flower pot. But for larger plants, you will need catering size tins. Ask your lo local pizza parlor or Italian restaurant for their empty tinned ca tomatoes cans. Generally, they are happy to pass them on to you. Number one, use a sturdy nail and hammer to punch drainage holes in the base of the tin cans. Number two, most tin openers leave a smooth cut edge. But, if in doubt, you should cover the edges of the tins with masking tape. And number three, paint the tins with a coat of gloss paint, being careful to cover any masking tape thoroughly and leave to dry. Then you have these pretty painted cans. Oh, that's beautiful. 
Here we have a seasonal window display. That's really pretty. While most garden activities are curtailed or inhibited during the colder months of the year, the great advantage of window box gardening is that you don't even need to venture outdoors. Simply open your window and you are ready to plant, feed, and tend your mini garden and will enjoy an attractive and colorful display all year round. Most of us will have enjoyed the pleasure of a summer window box um, with luxuriant flowers tumbling over the sills and delicious scents drifting indoors, but summer is the season of abundance when the window box must compete with many other contenders for your attention. The impact of the fall, winter, and early spring window box is quite different. These are times when our attention is generally focused inwards and gardening is not a daily activity. So, it, so there is a particular pleasure in looking through a window and seeing bright flowers before you notice the leafless trees, bare borders, and gray skies beyond. Some of the techniques for window box gardening are different in the cooler months. It is best not to use a compost with added moisture retaining gel because this will tend to rot the roots. An ordinary, proprietary brand of potting compost used alone or mixed half and half with a soil-based compost will be better. Feeding is generally unnecessary and watering should only be done if the plants look very thirsty and then only in frost-free conditions. What you can grow during the winter depends very much on the area in which you live. Be guided by what your garden center recommends and accept that occasionally, exceptionally cold weather will wreak havoc in such an exposed position. Because most window boxes are more or less at tabletop level, they are ideal for close-up viewing, so it is worth paying a little extra attention to detail. Choose compact varieties so they're less liable to wind damage, and look for plants that have interesting markings that will reward close inspection. Although you should not buy plants and flower in the summer, you can do so in the cooler months because the flowers last much longer at this time of year. After planting, cover the soil with moss or bark to conserve moisture. And here we're going to take a look at balconies and patios. That's really cute. Little containers. If you live in a city, a balcony or terraced patio may be your entire garden. But limited space does not mean you need to limit your imagination. Your patio can be transformed into what appears to be a fragment of a much larger garden by using everything on a grand scale and including mirrors to create an illusion of space. On a balcony, planting on several levels using wall pots, shelves, and columns lets you fill your space with color and pay tribute to a dream garden. That's really cool, the little layers. Oh, that's pretty. Most balcony and patio gardens consist almost entirely of container plants. The advantage of using containers is that you can treat the space like a stage, set and move everything around without having to uproot your favorite plants. Plan major changes for the end of a season when you can assess the condition of the plants and trim, fertilize, or discard them as necessary. This is also an opportunity to sweep up dead leaves, dispose of any snails and slugs that you uncover, and generally give the whole area a facelift. Between the seasons, move smaller plants around to keep the view interesting. Container plants need regular watering, and this can be very time-consuming, but there are ways to make your task easier. Gravel-filled saucers under the pots will help retain moisture, and grouping pots together cuts down on evaporation. Plastic or fiberglass pots need less water than terracotta ones and are much lighter, which can be an important consideration on a balcony. If you don't like the look of plastic flower pots, slip them inside more decorative clay containers. If you have to carry water from an indoor faucet, 
Make the effort to fill the watering can again when you have finished. You can use it on wilting plants in between your re regular watering sessions. A balcony or patio with an outside faucet can make use of one of the automatic watering systems which are available from garden centers. A microchip controlled timer is attached to the faulted faucet and water is fed to each plant through a network of thin tubes. It sounds more complicated than it is, and once set up, it will free you from the task of watering. All plants grown in containers will benefit from mulch, which retains moisture as well as provides extra nutrients. Oh, and here we have raised pots, like that. For maximum impact and variety in a small area, it is essential to use the available vertical space wherever possible, not just on walls, but on any terraced areas and borders. Raising some pots above others creates a bank of color rather than a flat plane and allows the plants to be admired individually rather than en masse. Although pots come in many shapes and sizes, Big pots are not always practical or affordable on a patio or balcony, and without a variation in size, the pots can look rather uninspired, unless they are arranged at different levels. At its simplest, this can be done by placing one pot on another empty, upturned pot. This can be a useful function for a cracked or damaged pot. That's a good idea. Old architectural pots are a very attractive and reasonably inexpensive way to raise other pots and can be bought from junkyards or some garden centers. Invest in a few of varying heights and they will be in constant use as plinths for raised pots. The ornate ones can be very beautiful and expensive but are more suitable as a focal point. The simple elegance of plain pots makes them better plinths. Topped with a terracotta or ceramic saucer, they will provide a stable base for a plant. Metal stands have a simple architectural beauty that is suitable for a formal area with topiary and evergreen planting. Although quite expensive to buy, they are a real asset to this style of gardening. If you can't find any at garden centers, an iron worker may be prepared to make them for you. An old-fashioned metal washstand is a ready-made alternative that would look wonderful in a more informal setting. On the patio or balcony, where every inch of space is precious, the positioning of a plinth against tall growing plants can give you an extra area of display between ground level and the flowers. Once you start layering the plants this way, you will realize the potential to add greater substance and interest to your gardening. For those with a taste for the classical, pillars and columns make wonderful raised plant stands. They can be topped with large urns of handsome feature plants or softer displays of trailing plants, depending on the situation and the effect you want to create. If you do not have the budget for classical stone or marble pillars, try paint effects on plastic or fiberglass replicas. Seen from a distance, they can look deceptively like the real thing. Whatever you use to raise the height of the display, you can instantly create a 3D effect, giving the space a greater depth than it would otherwise have and increasing the apparent dimensions of the area. With clever use of raised containers, an almost jungle-like planting can deceive the eye into believing the garden is without boundaries. Hot colors. Until fairly recently, it was fashionable in gardening to keep the palette restricted and to concentrate on cool, soft colors. Pretty as they are, they don't appeal to the more extrovert gardeners who like to make an impact with their plants and find the bright, hot colors much more appealing. Fortunately for them, in the same way that many of us are now using much stronger colors in our homes, and manufacturers are meeting that need, 
so growers are also beginning to expand their range of vibrantly colored plants to please even the most boldly extrovert gardener. Balconies or patios are very restrictive areas in which to make a garden, and subtle planting can quickly become rather boring. A little like, attra a little like attractive but undemanding wallpaper, it is appreciated when first seen but soon goes unnoticed. Bright, hot colors grab the attention and cannot be ignored, especially when used in a small area. As it's most basic, at its most basic, you can use a single color, even a single variety of plant that is masked for impact. Little can rival the bright red of the geranium when it is in full bloom. But if even this is too subtle for you, choose the hot colors of India, orange marigolds, purple heliotrope, lime green tobacco plants, magenta petunias, shocking pink verbenas, and scarlet geraniums. Planted separately in blocks of color or massed together in a glorious hodgepodge, these plants will vibrate with color and may even cause more delicate souls to wince. To maintain the plants in prime condition, it is essential to water them daily and a regular liquid fertilizer will help keep the flowers and foliage vibrant. Deadhead as often as you have time and cut back any stems that become leggy to encourage the growth of new foliage and flowers. With this sort of care, your balcony or patio will remain colorful from early summer right through the fall. And this is our last section for today. We're going to read about edible displays. Here we have some strawberries. Nothing ever tastes quite as good as homegrown food, and although the small garden is unlikely to provide enough space for anyone other than the dedicated enthusiast to grow serious amounts of produce, it does add an extra, very enjoyable dimension to gardening. Many edible plants can be grown successfully in containers, but it is sensible to stick to the more decorative varieties of vegetable, which will blend attractively with the rest of the plants in the garden like tomatoes. These days, garden centers have realized that many gardeners do not have the time, space, or inclination to grow fruit and vegetable plants from seed. As a result, they stock an ever-increasing range of compact varieties of plants ready for planting, from tomatoes, eggplants, and chilies, to miniature fruit trees, all of which will perform well in pots. Look for the healthiest plants with strong stems and deep green coloring. Lanky, pale plants that have been starved of food or water at this early stage will never grow well. Try to be realistic in your choice of plants, even if you are tempted by all the varieties on offer. If your garden is in more or less permanent shade, you will never be able to grow tomatoes successfully while alpine strawberries prefer shady corners to bright sunlight. As with all gardening, grow the right plant in the right place. Uh, this, is more, this is ultimately far more rewarding than fighting the odds. Edible, edible plants are gross feeders, which means they will need plenty of nutrients incorporated into the soil mix and regular liquid fertilizer throughout the growing season. A layer of composted hummus, humus in the base of the pot will provide a rich source of nourishment for mature plants, and pelleted manure added to the soil mix at the time of planting will ensure strong growth. If you add to this a weekly dose of a multi-purpose liquid fertilizer, you will be sure to produce bumper crops. Pets find edible plants just as delicious as we do, so you will need to be vigilant. Top of the hit list are slugs and snails, which can chomp their way through ripening fruit and vegetables at an alarming rate. Slug pellets are an effective deterrent to these pests, and a wide band of petroleum jelly smeared around the pot, just below the rim, will also halt slugs in their tracks. Positioning any pots on sharp gravel is another effective slug deterrent. 
that gives you a little information about your edible gardens, like this little strawberry basket. That's really cute. Look at that. A basket planted up with alpine strawberries is easy to prepare and looks extremely decorative. It really does. Step number one, line the wicker basket with a generous layer of sphagnum moss to help retain moisture and prevent the soil from trickling out. And step number two, fill the basket with soil and plant the strawberry plants firmly so that the soil is level with the base of the stems and water well. Thank you so much for coming to check this out today. I hope you enjoyed the little sections that we read about gardening in small spaces, and I hope to see you again really soon.